Shabbat Shalom to all of you. Uh, we are coming back to the regular uh, reading of the portions of the Torah, the Parashat, of this time the second one of the fourth book of the Torah, Bamidbar. Uh, Naso, lift up or take a census to take a, in consideration. Um, I don't know how many of you have heard me talking before, but uh, I always say that uh, the chosen people, and uh, what is characterized the Israel, the chosen ones, is the creator who chose them. And sometimes, uh, I can hear some of my, my own people, they say, I didn't ask God to choose me. No? Or uh, some people say to me, you know, uh, I am talking to even my friends who are Israelis. And they say to me, I don't want to do anything with Israel or I, 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 want no, I, I, don't, I don't want to be part of the chosen ones. It's, it's very interesting because lately I have been listening different, uh, what I call it, debates among people that supposedly are very intelligent or very capable, and especially about the idea about free will versus determinism. Um, it's, it's interesting because this is not only a problem among uh, religious people. It's a problem all, all around, even for people who are not uh, believers in any way. Um, interestingly enough, uh, in these areas, some of them, they, they, they look more like each other uh, the atheists and the religious people, they look like it, that they are great in certain areas. One of the things that uh, happens is the, this idea that um, I have been born to do certain things and I cannot get out of that. And how, if I have been born to something, how I can say that I have free will to make decisions? No. Now, uh, as a counselor, I like to take a test, of a personality test, very simple to many of the people. Um, there are four characteristics in this test. And they give us uh, indications about each person's personality or inclination. What, they, what do they favor in their personal life? I still today, I have not found two identicals. And I have done many of them. And still today, even people who have similar characteristics are very different too. Even when you talk about twins, uh, identical twins, you're going to see that it has a very specific personality. Each one is unique. As you know, in Psalm 139, say the Creator that He has made us or formed us in very special or particular way. Then, this idea about being chosen or being special sometimes contradict the other side of the idea about Behira Hopshi, what is the free will. I have been speaking to you, for example, about free will. is the greatest gift that the Creator has given to us as humans. We are very different to the rest of the creation. We are the only ones that in the Torah say very clear that we have been made to His image and likeness. Um, because of that, we needed to understand it from the perspective of more of the material area to the spiritual area than to the physical side. As many people through the ages have tried to make their own gods according to their own image and their own uh, uh, way of seeing things. Now, most of the religions, you are going to be surprised about this, what I'm going to tell you. Most of the religions, they made their gods according to their own image. 
they, uh, they are projections of themselves. No? Um, sometimes they use words as divine revelation or things like that, but usually it's a, it's a, it's a projection. Now, when I had been doing this uh, test, giving this test to the to different people, and I interview them, and I talk to them, and I'm trying to explain to them what are the characteristics of why they, they are in this way and that way. It's interesting. Many of the people say to me, yes, I am like that. Or yes, I, I have certain inclinations. Or yes, I have these tendencies. No? Very few people have said to me, no, no, you are totally wrong. Of course, I have some of them, that believe me, I have some of them, that the uh, special those that they don't, don't like to be told how they look like or who they are, you know? Um, the question here will come in, in this portion. It's very interesting because we are in the process of God, the creator, blessed is his name, ordering his people and giving them a function to each one of them, to the 12 tribes, plus the 13 tribes, the Levites, and the Kohenim, that is a sub, uh, I would call it a sub-tribe from the Kehatites, uh, our own descendants. And each one is going to be described their duties. You know, and at the, at the end of chapter four, of, of this, uh, uh, of, of this uh, parasha, let me read it to you what it say. You know, um, <clears throat> let me find it here in my uh, chapter 4, 49. I have it here and then I already left it. Where I put it. By orders of the Creator, basically say, you know, the Alpi Adonai, the Alpi Adonai by the mouth of God, you know, but I say, Alpi, Alpi Adonai, the God of Tan, Begia Moshe. So, uh, through the hand of Moshe was ordered to do a census. No, uh, this is a, a, a idiomatic expression, meaning that by the authority, uh, Moshe had the authority to do it. And he said, um, each, each man, you know, each is al abodato. Every man will be classified according to their duties. Abodato means their, the work, you know, the duties. Um, and he said, uh, and Beal Masaol, uh, and according to not only to their duties, but uh, according to their, uh, I would call uh, more than duties, the efforts, the things that they need to do, uh, right? I mean, all the weight that they need to carry on. You know, they have the duties, the function, and the duties. And everybody was counted according to what the Creator as Moshe Rabbeinu. If you read it, you, and you reread it, you want to see something here. That already the Creator is giving us this idea that we are counted for a reason. And the reason is because each one of us, we are going to have a function. And we need to carry that function with us. I mentioned to you last uh, two weeks ago when we started Mamimbar, is about what is the my function, my mission, what I have been called for. All Israel has been called by the Creator. They are chosen by the Creator. Now, how how he choose? He choose because you are good looking or you are smart. 
you know, in you go in First Kings, you know, uh, in Samuel, I'm sorry, in Samuel, when uh, King David is chosen, you know, and and then uh, they're go the 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 prophet going through all the children of Jesse. I you know, and and he go from the oldest, and then finally he said to Jesse, "What are these all your children?" Because all of them look look like very good, even the oldest one, a strong, a warrior, ready to to take uh, leadership, and no one was chosen. Finally, said, "Do you have any other child?" And what the uh, yes, it say I say, Isa, say to to the prophet, he say to Samuel, he say. Choose uh, the still. I have one son. He is in the in the field. He's taking care uh, of the of the lambs, of the the herd, the youngest one. And he went to see him. And he chose that one. And then say something very interesting. God doesn't choose by the outside. God choose by what is inside of the person. What God sees, men don't see. Then when you are in a special place as our community, sometimes you don't even realize that you have been chosen. And you can say, why the creator choose me? I don't have anything to give. And, and, the, and the creator doesn't choose you for what you can give to him. But the creator is choosing you because who you are and what you are ready to serve him. Israel was chosen by the creator. The creator never asked Israel if they wanted to be chosen. It choose Israel. Many of us sometimes we feel that we do not want to be part of something, but we, we feel that attraction or that we cannot get out away from that. And, and we cannot understand why it's such an attraction for us. Part of the reason is because we are afraid to take a responsibility. Because once you are chosen, you have a responsibility. You need to do something. And what I want to do? I am good for nothing. How many people have told me, I don't have anything to give. I don't have any uh, special uh, attitude, uh, I am no smart, I, am, I don't do this, I am no a millionaire, I don't have this, I don't have, everybody's looking for an excuse. And suddenly, the creator start working through you in situations that you less expected. And you start seeing that is something that you are good about that you can do something. And always, we become our worst enemies. We are very self-destructive. I am good for nothing. God cannot choose me. Here, the Creator chose the 12 tribes, and chose the 13 tribes that live in, and chose Aaron and his son for doing certain jobs. And each one had a role to, to fulfill, to play. And each one, under the eyes of the Creator, were the same value. But they had different functions. You know, uh, I mentioned to you last two weeks ago about that the Creator doesn't look about uniformity. You know? But, uh, but it looks about unity. 
What do you mean uniformity? That everybody is a light. Unity means that we are united to do a work together. Each one has a different capability. From the beginning, the creator brought uh, two very important men, Bezalel and Oholiab. Each was had something special to give, but they couldn't do it by themselves. They need other people who have certain qualifications or qualities to do certain type of job. Not everybody is going to lead. There are some that are leaders, there are some that are workers. It's normal. Every place that happens. But what happens with us as human beings? When we categorize, we give importance to the people that look higher or they they look like that they are more important than, than others. And we taking the value of ourselves and we diminish ourselves and we look like that we are good for nothing. When I do counseling, constantly I need to deal with people who they they say that they have, or oh, they look like that they have low self-esteem, and they are constantly saying, I am good for nothing. And they're constantly telling me that so-and-so is much better, so-and-so does this, and so on. And they're constantly comparing themselves with others. And always I tell them, you don't need to compete with others. This is a very, very American idea. Number one, number one, number one. That is totally wrong. You need to be number one in yourself, not number one with the others. You need to be the best of who you are. But you don't need to compare yourself with somebody else. Because the creator has given to you qualities that are uniquely for you. You are very unique. They are not two of you. And same the creator, they are only one of you in this world. Okay? Two of you will be too many, too much. You need only one. I don't want to make name, give you your name, but can you imagine that there are two of you here on earth? If one already is a problem, <laughs> how many two? No, <laughs> enough for one. Then, going back to what I start, this questioning about the hierarchy or determinism. Are we have free will or we are determined to do something? Each one of us we're going to have a, a right to our own idea. But I have mentioned to you that the greatest gift that the Creator has given to all of us is the capability to decide for ourselves. Most of the very liberal people, the progressive people, they tell you that you have no the, cap the capability to decide for yourself. This is the reason that they, they are going to do the decision for you. You are so dummy that you cannot think for yourself. Secondly, you are not responsible because you see, you are a product of the environment. And being a product of the environment is not your responsibility. Somebody make you like that. Um, today is very popular for young people to blame their parents or to tell their parents, you know, you owe me. Believe me or not, I was in one time counseling a family and one of the children said to the parents in the moment, I didn't ask you to be born. You brought me here, you pay for it. Well, and the parents, <laughs> they smile. <laughs> I cannot, I, I am telling you. I went through that. How can you 
make a home with those uh, values that your children do not carry any responsibility or they cannot learn to be themselves. You teach them, you prepare them, but at the end, they are going to be responsible for their own action. We are in a world in which we pass the buck to somebody else. We always pass in the buck. It's somebody else's responsibility. When the Creator made the, the camp for Israel, he ordered in such a way, there were three camps. The camp of the Mishkan, the camp of the Leviim, and the camp of the people of Israel. And each camp has their own qualifications and their own regulations. And to go to one of the other camp, you needed to have the, the appropriate conditions to be there. You couldn't jump over because you wanted. You needed to be ready to be there. You need to have the qualifications. Today, with this idea, look at this idea. We are free to do whatever we want to do, but we don't accept free will because free will means responsibility. You understand? Yeah, it's free because I am free, but it's all to me. Instead of I am here, to give, I have been created to receive. When this has happened, and we're seeing now this world, and we see right now a mess. You know, this COVID-19 is this only that is doing is making all our mistakes bigger, or we can see it better. What we as society, we have done. Just this last week, we have seen these uh, riots that supposedly was a protest against racism. You know, a protest about a white policeman killing a black uh, person will be wonderful if everybody goes, you know, and, and they are sorrow that they happen and they tell we need to change. But what happened? Even here in Montreal, it was a manifestation. In Montreal, in Canada. Creating riots. Why? Because we do not only we do not want the order that we have, but we are anti-system. We want a revolution because we don't have the we don't like the order. We're anti-system. And the news, they trying to support that type of behavior saying that these people are hurt and they need to vent their wrath. And the worst part it is that supposedly they're protesting against the white people and the people that they have hurt more is the people of color. I just read that one po black policeman was killed trying to defend his own place. And you start thinking, are we crazy or there is something wrong with the humanity? Wh what is happening to us? Why we are against 
order. What are we are against to do the things right, to have a, a, a right behavior? Why we do not follow what is right? Our values, our moral values are being destroyed. Everything that we have in society is going backwards. Now, what is the problem? And you're going to see that part of the problem is the education that we have right now. When you go to a school and your children are learning from very young, there is no any longer right or wrong. There is no any longer values that you need to hold on to. And the, you, you, uh, the teachers, they have less moral values than the children. You start asking yourself, where I am sending my children to learn what? But uh, most of the people, and this is the saddest part, most of the people are quiet. They're afraid to say anything because they are afraid what can happen to them. And what is really the environment that we are living? It's an environment of fear, panic. And we are threatening by that. And what a difference what the Creator has given to us giving us an order, and he gives us the, uh, the idea about to be strong. Hasak, hasab, and hasek. Be strong, be strong, be strengthening. Don't fear, totally the contrary. Go ahead. Only if you have a people, a community that's backing you up. Right now, we do not want to have communities. We want to do something totally different to what we have. Why? Because in that way, when you don't have community, you are on your own. You don't have a backer up. You don't have somebody to support you and you are totally isolated. And the Creator gave us the idea of Israel to show us how a community needs to function, and how we need to unite it. In the union, there is the strength, and to oppose anything evil. Then, let me go back about each one as an individuals, about to be counted. In this portion, it's very interesting that is the Birka Kohanim, the blessing of the priest. Jebateha Donai Benjismereha, Jaira Donai Panabeleha Vihuneka, Isa Aronai Panabeleha, Beyasem Leha Shalom. And you ask yourself, the Creator said to, Mo, uh, to Moshe, said to Aaron, these are the words that you want to bless my people. And look at, look at what, what this word has as a meaning, okay? We say, the Lord bless you and protect you. You are never going to be alone when you are in community and God is with you. To bless you means that he is going to be with you and protect you is going to keep you from harm because he is with you. Jair Aronai Panabeleja Vicuneca. The Lord make you, his face shine upon you. No? And he give you, uh, um, and he be. Bihuneka, he be gracious unto you. 
that he favored you. Shine upon you. The idea of shine means that his presence is going to be with you. You are not alone. You are with him. You're protected by him. In, in the Hebrew, a poetic way to speak, they talk about parallelism. And don't be surprised that these blessings are parallels. They are repeating the same ideas in different ways. But then the idea is the same. And then he say, Yisa Adonai Panabeleja Biasen Lecha Shalom. The Lord lift up his face, his countenance unto, unto, unto you, and he grant you his peace. Do you see these three lines? Each one of them is to tell you, you are not alone. You have been chosen for something special. Do your job. Don't complain too much about, <laughs> I am not good enough, because the creator doesn't commit mistakes. You have been made for a purpose. You need to look at a purpose in your life. And sometimes I say two weeks ago, many of you, you are already doing it. And you don't even see it that you are doing it. And finally, one day you're going to wake up and say, instead I, I compare it with so-and-so. I am grateful for what the Creator has done in my life to give to others. Stop comparing yourself with others. Stop trying to say, oh, poor of me. I am no good for nothing. Stop saying, you know, God committed a mistake in my life. I am a terrible person. Because every time that you say that, you are saying that God is a failure. We are important in his eyes. And I believe with all my heart that each one of us will have been chosen for something special. To be part of Israel, you need to be chosen. And when the Creator chooses you, it's for, to do, for you to do a job, but your free will still works. No one of us is forced to do the calling of God. Each one of us, we need to do it graciously and willingly, lovingly. The Creator doesn't want anybody who is forced to follow Him. Many of the religions, many of the religions, they are going to teach you that if you don't follow God, God is going to punish you and he's going to destroy you. Many of the religions, they teach you about fear instead to teach you about dedication to the creator. When you have your children. In Mislay, in Proverbs, say, you don't hold the, uh, the educational spanking. We call it educational spanking. Don't hold it. They, they need to know that there are consequences for misbehavior. But it doesn't mean to destroy your children. But as they tell you, it is that you need to teach them that when there is something wrong, need to be made it right. We are constantly trying 
to, uh, 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 to, to destroy what the Creator has given us as the teaching. We are become so smart. Believe me, we are becoming so smart that we have become more humane than God himself. God is, is a destructive force. We as human beings, we can reach better situations than God himself. My calling to all of you is this. In this portion, the creator is telling us that each one of us was has something to give. Each one of us who has been made with a purpose. No value exists for nothing. And the greatest joy in everybody's life is to find their own place and to do what is the right thing in their life. Because when you are doing what is right in your life, you are fulfilled. Don't compare yourself with anybody. If you need to compare with somebody, compare yourself with yourself. Anytime that you compare with somebody else, you are a loser. Even if you are better than somebody else to feel you, you are better, you are a loser. And the other way too, if there is somebody better than you in your, in your mind, and you compare with that person, you are a loser. Because you are not the other person. You are who you are, yourself. Now let me ask you to finish this simple message. Do you feel that you have been chosen or no? And look at what I say. It's a word that never like to ask people, but it's a word. Do you feel? Because feelings are no real things. But the real thing is the actions that you take. And sometimes we are confused by our feelings instead to be clear in who we are. How many people have said to me, Rabbi, I feel like it. I feel. I feel, feeling goes away, you are going to stay, believe me. One day you can feel bad, and the next day you can feel great, but you are still the same person. It's not how do you feel, it's who you really are. May the Lord bless each one of us and show us and doesn't matter how old are we. We can be very young. We can be old as me. But let me tell you, there is always room to keep learning and to keep improving. Have you been chosen? My answer to me, for me, is yes, I have been chosen. And I have been trying to run away from that idea of being chosen. Sometimes it's better somebody else needs to do it. But it is my, it's my responsibility. I need to do it. Then I cannot pass the buck to somebody else. Have you been chosen? Are you part of the order of the creator? If you're part of the order of the creator, you are in a very wonderful place because the creator is going to keep Asking you, do your job. Do your job. That's why you are here. Do your job. I am so glad to have you all of you this morning and have a wonderful Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom.